Welcome to Connect Kids. This week we are thinking a little bit about a day that happened a couple of days ago, which was St. George's Day. St. George's Day, and yeah. how apparently he was like some guy who slayed a dragon or apparently. some yeah. fairy tale like that. So I thought actually we'd look at kind of similar. David and Goliath. Ooh, so okay. we'll look at our David and Goliath story and have a bit of think about that. And um, of course, we need to have some fun as oh, well. Oh, yeah. So we're going to play oh, our corners game. The corners we game? We like our corners Ooh. game, don't we? Yeah. Oh, I'm excited about that. We're going to play that and we're going to have some fun and have a great time oh, together. Let's go play the corners game. Let's do it. Are you game for a game? That sounds yeah. really weird. Game for a game, too many games. Let's just play a game. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna play the game Corners. So we are going to number this room. Okay. And you're gonna number your room. Okay. So up here, this is number one. So one corner of your room is gonna be number one. Look at the corner. Say one. 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 Then the next corner is going to be number two. Say two. two. Find the corner in your room that is number two. So we've got one, we've got two, then we're going to go three. So find the corner in your room that is number three. Point to in, say three. three. And then find the corner number four down here. That is number four in your room. So have a look at your room. One, two, three, four. Make sure you remember what they are. You are going to have a little boogie, have a dance around. You can run around in circles if you want to. And then when the music stops, okay. you need to find a corner. Okay. So for them, they'll find a corner in their room. Yeah. For you, yeah. you will point to one of the corners. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, how yeah. is this going to work? You can't really jump up there. No. It's not a good idea. No. Okay, you ready? I am ready. They're probably ready because they're great at games. They are. They're you ready? Amazing. Get dancing! Okay, stop! Find a corner. Okay, go and find a corner, Emily. Choose your corner. <clears throat> What's it gonna be? Which one is it? Okay. And the corner is... Two. So if you were in corner two, uh, this was a practice so it doesn't count, but you would have to do 10 star jumps to get back in the game. Okay, but that one was a practice. Do you get it? I forgot what the numbers of the corners were, to be honest. Well, that one was three. Oh. Great. So uh, you would have been in anyway, so that's fine. Okay, are you ready? And off we go. Find a corner. Okay, which one's she gonna go for this time? Ooh. Okay, the corner is four. Ooh. Okay, so you chose number two, so you're okay. I'm okay, I'm okay. Ooh. If you chose number four, 10 star jumps to get back in the game. I'm ready to dance. Let's go again. Off you go. Find a corner. Ooh, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Okay, it is one. Oh, Emily, no. 10 star jumps to get back in the game. Okay, if you need to do 10 star jumps, do them now. Ha ha. Done. Done. Nice one. Thanks. Good job. Okay, are you ready for another? Yeah, bit more dancing. Off you go. And stop. Find a corner. Okay, find the corner that you want. Which one's Emily gonna go for? That one. Three. Well done, you're still in because that, that was four. Nice one. If you pick number three, you need to do 10 star jumps to get it back Ooh. in the game. And this is going to be the last 
round. Okay. Are you ready? I am. Big old dancing. Yep. Last time. Give it all you've got. Best dancing. Go! <laughs> Okay, last time. Okay. If you've done them all right so far, see if you can get this last one. Ooh. Okay. It is number four. Oh, yes. Well done, Emily. If you got number four, ten star jumps to finish off. Off you go. Well done. Oh, good job. I only had to do ten. True. You only got one. One run. Yeah. To be fair, I'm well I'm just picking them out of a bowl, so <laughs> there's nothing to determine whether you're going to get it right or not. It's just how it is. Well, well done, everyone. Hopefully, you've got moving a little bit. Guess what time it is? Oh, I know, I know. Is it? Is it? Story time. It is indeed. Yes. Story time. Oh, I love story time. Rhyme and Bible. Yeah, okay, from... by Bob Hartman. Mm, Just in mm, case you yeah, wanted yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah. So, this story, I thought maybe we could do together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's called When My Fears A Giant Sized. Ooh, is this the one about David? It is. Right, David was awesome. I, he's one of my favourite people in the Bible because anyone that knows me well knows that I share quite a lot in common with David. Well, your name. I have the same name yeah. as David. David's my actual real name. Bet you didn't know that. Mm. Well, you maybe said Maybe some of them did, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, David, great guy. He was a shepherd boy, um, but all his brothers were bigger and stronger than him. And they were like warriors in, in the army with the Israelites. But, but David never really got a chance because he was just a little shepherd boy. But whilst he was a shepherd boy, he used to have to protect his sheep from lions and bears and all sorts of things like that. Um, and so he was, he was great at being really, really protective and really good with his hands. Um, and so some of that, those skills came out in this story, actually, I think we'll find. Um, really smart guy, great. Actually went on to be a king. Yeah. Yeah, there you. you go. Yeah. Okay, do you want to start? Oh, go on, go on then. <laughs> oh. So, when my fears are giant sized. David took his brothers a lunch of cheese and bread. Soldiers on a battlefield, they needed to be fed. And that's when he spied a giant foot and leg and arm and head and heard the giant's challenge and bravely stood and said, God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. So when my fears are giant sized, I trust that God is there. You cannot fight a giant, his frightened brothers cried. He'll squash you like an insect. He's more than twice your size. You're just a little shepherd boy. You should be terrified. But David knew that God would help. And that's why he replied. God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. So when my fears are giant sized, I trust that God is there. So David went and told the king, I'll take that giant's dare. Then have my armour, said the king. It's standing over there. When David tried it on, he found it much too hard to wear. A sling and stones is all I need, he said. Well, and a prayer. God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. So when my fears are giant sized, I trust that God is there. The giant looked at David. He growled and cursed and roared. You send this stick-sized boy against my spear and shield and sword? I'll beat him without trying. Then feed him to the birds. <laughs> but David reached inside the pouch where his five stones were stored. God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. So when my fears are giant sized, I trust that God is there. 
The giant rushed towards him, his face an angry red. David swung his sling and aimed straight for the giant's head. That small stone struck its target. The giant fell down dead. And his brothers clapped and cheered. And David simply says, God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. So when my fears are giant sized, I trust that God is there. What wow. a story! That was dramatic. It was. Wow. Have you ever heard of St. George? Yeah? No? Maybe? Uh, well, today, whilst I'm recording this video, it is actually St. George's Day, which is a special day for England that happens every year. Uh, but who, who was St. George? Hmm. Well, to help us work out who St. George was, I've got us a quiz. You all love a good quiz, right? Yeah, yeah, you all, you all love a good quiz, I thought so. So, well, it's actually a quiz about the four patron saints uh, we have in the British Isles. So that's St. George for England, St. David for Wales, St. Andrew for Scotland, and uh, my personal favourite, St. Patrick for Ireland. Now, are you ready? Okay, so question one. Which saint is this? This saint was a friend of Jesus and had a brother called Peter. Was it St. George? Was it St. Andrew? Was it St. David? Was it St. Patrick? Who do you think? Oh, I wonder, who do you think that was? Had a, had a friend? I was, I was a friend with Jesus and a brother called Peter. I wonder, uh, was it George, Andrew, David or Patrick? Well, I can reveal it is St. Andrew. St. Andrew had a brother called Peter and was a friend of Jesus and we can read about him in the Bible. Okay, saint number two, question number two. This saint built lots of monasteries for Welsh monks. Was that St. George, St. Andrew, St. David, or St. Patrick? Is there a clue in the question or is it a trick question, I wonder? Hmm. Was that St. George, Andrew, David, or Patrick? Who do you think? <laughs> when you're watching this, wherever you are, what are you thinking? Ooh, who could it be? Who could it be? Well, I can reveal that the saint who built lots of monasteries for Welsh monks was in fact St. David. That's right, okay. Oh, question number three. Which saint was captured as a slave and spread Christianity across a whole country. Who was this? Was it St. George, St. Andrew, St. David, or St. Patrick? Ooh, I mean, that's, that's quite a good thing to do, to spread Christianity across a whole country, even when you've been captured as a slave. Hmm, who do you think it was? Was it George? Was it Andrew? Was it David? Was it Patrick? It was, in fact, St. Patrick! Well done if you got that one right. And our final one. I'm not going to say it's the last one remaining from the four, because, you know, maybe this applies to some of the other saints. Who knows? But this saint apparently rescued a princess from a dragon. Who do you think that might be? St. George, St. Andrew, St. David or St. Patrick? It is actually the last one, it is, it is St. George. There we go, St. George, the patron saint of England, apparently, apparently rescued a princess from a dragon. Now, all of the other saints, I, I think, existed and, and it sounds like their stories add up and make sense, but rescuing a prince from a dragon sounds a little bit, a little bit fairy tale -y to me. Um, but anyway, so well done if you got any of them right, if you guessed them correctly, well done. But what, what was all that about St. George and the dragon? I mean, they do all sound real, the other stories, but this one just sounded like a fairy tale to me. I, I don't know, but 
I think maybe there's something good for us to learn from it anyway. Because actually it sounds a bit, a little bit similar to what I believe is a very real story about David and Goliath. The story that myself and Emily read a little bit earlier, where God helped little David defeat the biggest, the most grotesque warrior I can even imagine. So let's have a think about that story. Let's, let's look a bit closer at the story of, of our friend Dave and Goliath. I wonder, what did you notice as we were reading it? Hmm, lots of things in there that we could have noticed, but one thing I noticed in David's story is that he decided not to wear heavy armour or take heavy weapons, but instead he trusted in what God had already given him. God gave him the ability to be a great shot with a sling because that's what he used for fighting off the, the lions and bears when he was protecting his sheep. He also trusted in the confidence God had given him, believing the truth about who he was as David, the one God loved and cared for. Let's have a think about this for us then, for, for me and, and for you. I think we often have to face giants in life. Maybe not actual gigantic people, but big, big problems that get in our way. Maybe those problems might be kind of scary too. It could be the dark, fierce dogs, monsters, or maybe it's things actually, things like tests, or falling out with friends, or maybe even problems we might have at home. But just like David, when we face giants, giant problems, when, when we're worried or scared or things seem impossible and we just want to shout, I can't, I can't do it. We remember what amazing things God has put in our lives that we can trust to help us. Maybe it's people God has put in our lives who we know we can trust, like trusted grown-ups in school. Or maybe like me, you believe that God can also give us what we need to battle those big problems in life. Later on in the Bible, in, in the New Testament, um, there's, there's a bit in the New Testament of a letter that a guy called Paul writes. And Paul writes about how God gives his believers a special type of armour. Not one made of metal that's super heavy and David doesn't want to wear, but one made up of really important things like knowing the truth, finding peace, having faith, believing God can save us and that he gives the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us. The first part of the armour that Paul t tells us about is the belt of truth. So you see, in a suit of armour, the belt holds everything together and keeps it attached to your body. So when Paul, when Paul says that God has given us the belt of truth, he is saying that if we remember the truth that God has given us in, in his word, to us through the Bible, truths like knowing we are loved by God, knowing we are created with a purpose, knowing that God is always with us. If we know truths like that, it, we can, it can help us face all sorts of problems. The second part of the armour is the breastplate of righteousness which is like a piece of armour that goes across the chest to protect all of our most important body parts inside, like especially the heart. Another way of thinking about, about that strange word, righteousness, is goodness that comes from God. So it's like remembering that God's goodness is much more powerful than any bad that comes our way. 
the third part of the armour, is the shoes, which Paul says are like the message of peace. So that reminds us that the good news of Jesus can bring peace to our hearts and means we need to be showing peace to the world as well. Now, the armour is also made up of the, uh, of the shield of faith, so believing that God will shield us and protect us, uh, the helmet, uh, the helmet that saves us, which reminds us that if we keep God in our minds, he will save us from the bad we come across or even the bad we might do ourselves in this world by giving us everlasting life in heaven with him as a wonderful gift of forgiveness. And the last piece of the armour is the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Holy Spirit. We've, we've talked about the Holy Spirit a lot in a few of our sessions, but we remember that the Holy Spirit is actually God's Spirit at work in our lives, lighting up the darkness, helping us live for Jesus, and helping us to see amazing miracles and things. Whew, that's a lot of armour. <laughs> it might not be physical armour made of metal and stuff, but if you think about all those amazing things and what they symbolise, I hope you feel, like me, a lot more equipped to face those giants in life. Those big, difficult, scary situations and know that one day, one day, we'll get to know what it means to be completely saved from those things when we get to heaven with God. So, what can we take from this session today? So like St George used his physical knight's armour and weapons to rescue the princess from the dragon, how can we use those amazing things that God has given us, like David used the amazing things that God gave him, how can we use those amazing things that God has given us to help other people in the world when they're facing situations and problems? Maybe it's using our shield of faith to show faithfulness by being a trusted friend to someone. Maybe it's using our belt of truth to remind someone of the truth that they are wonderful and loved. Or maybe it's being strong for them and using our breastplate of righteousness to help them do the right thing, to find goodness, God's goodness in their life. Or maybe it's praying for them, praying they might have the strength and peace of God in their lives. Whatever you do, whatever giants or dragons you face, or what they symbolise, those big things in life that we come up against, remember that God has given us everything we need to get through and will always be there with us in our lives. See you again soon for our next Connect Kids session. Bye!